Hi, uh, sorry about the delay. Um, my name is Jessica Ford, um, and I work with Project Jupiter. Um, and um, I would like to encourage you all, first of all, to please contribute to Project Jupiter. Um, but um, I'm actually here to talk about uh, other libraries that are in the uh, Pi Data open source data science community um, and um, about party planning and about why you should basically never do your seating assignments by hand. So if you're like me, you like a casual party, you know, people sitting around the table, maybe some chips, uh, maybe some dip, you know, um, very, very informal gatherings. Um, and those are typically the parties I like to organize. But unfortunately, most parties aren't necessarily all like that. There are formal seating arrangements, there's caterers, there's all these sorts of things you have to worry about. And if you're a bridesmaid like me, sometimes you tend to find that very frustrating. So you end up having to deal with lots of minutia and details, and as a data scientist, we don't necessarily want to deal with that, and so we would like to figure out a way to make this a little more optimal. So if I'm going to drive home one message to you all, don't do your seating arrangements by hand. Again, I'm just going to say one more time, don't do your seating arrangements by hand. So uh, there are... Um, uh, various tools developed by um, operations research, computer science, mathematics, um, ca called optimization methods. And um, with these optimization methods, you can, too, also uh, solve the dreaded seating assignment problem. So now we're going to talk about some math here. Uh, set partitioning um, divides a set of integers, in this case maybe people, um, into k subsets. Right, so the k subsets might be your k tables. Um, and uh, in set partitioning, each integer must be included. Now, um, if we want to actually exclude an integer just because it's too inconvenient to find a table for them to sit in, we would call this set packing. Um, and when k equals 2, you can use your trusty old dynamic programming from your algorithms textbook uh, to solve the problem. Um, but if k is greater than 2, then you get to do some interesting research on um, better methods for uh, scalability and optimization. So there are a number of open source optimization libraries out there uh, that can handle solving uh, various optimization problems. And um, they often require the user to define the problem in some sort of mathematical format. All right, so um, one of these kinds of uh, problems is a linear program. So um, this optimizes a linear function uh, subject to some sort of constraint. Um, and um, the pulp uh, library, which is a, a Python linear programming library, um, one of many, uh, has a really nice tutorial on uh, seating assignments, um, which has been written by Stuart Mitchell, which defines it as a linear problem um, which is a, in which some variables are integers, which is also known as a mixed integer linear problem. So in this case, um, we, have, we want to minimize the total amount of unhappiness at each table, um, and we want to make sure that um, each table assigns someone um, and that everyone ends up in a table. So now it's time for us to plan our party. So um, I'm going to be planning a party for the managers of Enron. Um, and this is uh, thanks to the Freedom of Information Act. We get um, an email from individuals at Enron, mostly management. This is a subset of about 150 in individuals, um, which has been published by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Um, it's about 500,000 emails. And um, thanks to um, a bunch of researchers, such as uh, uh, Ishiguro and uh, my colleague Stephen too. Um, we're able to get this in a nice, neat format. Um, if you want to look for um, the data itself, um, I just have the link below. Um, and um, there are other ways of solving this problem. Um, the um, Megan Bellows and JD Luke Peterson do a really nice job of actually of defining uh, the happiness metric as actually a um, a uh, distance between individuals um, in which um, if people know each other, we give them a score of one. Um, if people don't know each other, we give them a score of zero. And if they're, you know, like uh, partners or close family, like, like parents and children or something like that, then we give them a score of 50. Um, and then we, we subject them to a number of additional constraints. So um, to, to break down the math in here, um, for 
each uh, guest pair, J and K, we have an adjacency matrix that represents the relationship between them. And as I said, um, we give them a score of zero if they don't know each other, one if they do, and 50 if they're very close. Um, if just guests J and K are at the same table, then the table gets the score from this adjacency matrix. Um, and we want to be able to, sub to maximize the score of all these tables subject to every guest being seated, no table has more assignments than the number of seats, and each guest must know B other guests in their table. So now I'm going to uh, take a minute to set up uh, my other uh, computer, which has this uh, toy demo. Can you see that? Okay. Let me. Is it still connected? Okay. Just gonna try to increase the sizes. Could you guys let me know if you guys can read it? Is this big enough? Can you guys read it all? You're good? Okay. Okay. Great. Um, can you hear me? Is this mic working? Oh, this, this, is the, this is the live mic. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so again, as I said, uh, let's imagine 115 managers at Enron are having a party. Um, and thanks to FOIA, we can guess their social connections through their email. Uh, so um, I've uh, imported in a bunch of uh, Typical uh, data science libraries. Um, some of the ones you might not be, the one you might not be familiar with is Pulp. Um, Pulp is a library for uh, linear programming. And um, I'm just borrowing, um, I'm modifying some code that uh, Stephen Tu has written to process the pickled results of the uh, data set of 115 managers. Um, and in here, I'm just saying um, if uh, the if the person is talking about themselves, then we're not. We're going to assume they don't know themselves. Um, and if they do know themselves, if they email someone, um, then both the sender and receiver pair and the receiver sender pair um, in this matrix are marked as true. Right. So we just have a simple boolean. We're kind of assuming that no one here is like close family or something like that. Okay. So I'm just gonna plot this, and this is what the matrix looks like. Um, but you know, uh, given the fact that these um, methods can be pretty uh, demanding computationally, um, I'm going to be using uh, a subset of this data. Um, and I'm just going to be slightly modifying the tutorial from uh, Stuart Mitchell uh, at Pulp, uh, which is, a, again, an open source library for linear programming. Um, and so I have now taken the first 25 people by their ID uh, and I've made it into a data frame and I'm just going to now look for um, individuals in that 25 people under which they at least know one person, right? They know one other person, um, just to simplify the problem and to make sure we are getting people at the party who know each other. So uh, when we when we take that out, then we can plot um, the number of connections each person has, right? So six is the social butterfly, six knows everybody, and 21 knows only one other person. Most other people know about two or three people. So there are now 16 individuals, um, which is a nice number to work with for simplicity, and I'm just going to divide them into four tables of four. Um, and I'm going to take a different distance metric um, 
for, to from uh, Mitchell's uh, tutorial, and I'm going to use instead the Bellows and Peterson metric, which is the happiness um, of the table as defined as the number of social connections within that table. So um, I'm just taking the table and I'm I'm summing up the number of trues and I'm dividing it by two because the matrix is symmetric. Uh, so now I've en enumerated the possible tables in here, right? So this is four choose four, and there are um, almost a little over uh, 1,800 possible tables. Uh, and then. I'm now defining the guests as the IDs. And then um, I'm, I've just picked the simpler of the optimization problems in these two um, by using Stuart Mitchell's. Um, so I want to be able to uh, maximize the happiness quotient, um, which you see as the seeding model defined. And um, I'm saying that, uh, that the table can be, if a table is end up being used in this optimization, we have marked it as one as opposed to zero, uh, and um, we're uh, specifying that the maximum number of tables in here is four, um, and we want to make sure that there's only, there is a, that each guest is seated at one and only one table, um, and now we just run solve, and um, we're just now appending the list of tables that are ended up being chosen. And this runs really, really fast, because there's actually not that many options. So if we scroll down, these are the assignments we end up getting. So these are the four tables. These are the four individuals, I mean, four groups of four that ended up being chosen. And now we can just plot them, right? So tables, I'm using Python numbering just because this is a Python party. So we're going to start at zero. And uh, table zero has three social connections. So uh, person number four knows one person. Person number 12 knows number 24. Uh, person 16 also knows person number 24, and person number 24 knows two people, right? So um, with network X, I can just visualize this network, right? So, um, so two people only know one person, and two people know two people. And then table one has four social connections, right? So uh, person, Number six is the social butterfly who knows everybody. Uh, person number five knows two people. And person number 19 knows no two people. And person number 21 only knows person number six. Uh, and then similarly, we have uh, two pairs of two who know each other, but they don't know, each they don't know the other pairs. And then we have a similar situation um, as table one and table three. Let's see. Um, can I, So um, I've, I've used uh, an open source data set uh, to come up with a adjacency matrix, but it's actually pretty easy to use name your favorite social network API uh, to come up with your list of friends and their social connections and to figure out how to define who knows whom among the people you know. Um, and then with local knowledge, I'm sure you can figure out who the sort of close relations are and who wants to be seated with each other. Um, and again, these matrices are symmetric, so hopefully uh, collecting this data should be a little bit easier. Um, now, as a, due to time constraints, uh, optimization methods can take time to solve. Um, and we're only using 16 users, right? So this is not going to take too much time. I could have rerun the whole thing from scratch in a matter of seconds. Um, so it's, it's really not that much. You're only choosing four out of uh, over 1,800 uh, possibilities. So that, that's generally pretty easy to work with. Um, but uh, if you're actually really planning your own party um, and say you have a couple hundred people, right? 
um, then you might have a lot more options to go through. Um, in, in the example from the Bellows and Peterson paper, the model had to run for 36 hours. Um, but luckily, um, the solution that they ended up working with was pretty happy with um, the mother-in-law of the bride, and I mean the mother of the bride and with uh, the rest of the party. So uh, hopefully that's pretty promising for you all. So um, now some other avenues for planning. Um, another way of solving um, these kinds of problems is with simulated annealing. Um, and that's another popular method for optimization, which uses randomization to take large steps in a search space um, earlier in a, the period of searching, um, and then slows down the search period over time. Uh, Wikipedia provides a really nice GIF um, showing this process. Um, and um, this is used in uh, Luke Plant's web app um, via by way of Perigeo's Simoneal library. Um, so I'm just gonna pull that, uh, I'm actually, I'm, I don't think I can pull up the web, I'm giving you a minute, I'm gonna try to pull it up. I'm gonna go back to this. So um, Luke Plant's uh, library ends up actually using um, the same metric we've defined as an adjacency matrix. Uh, matrix to, social, to uh, define social connections, um, but the main difference is that it uses simulated annealing um, to solve the problem. Um, and I was actually able to install it rather fine. It uses, um, uses a Python web app. Give me a minute to load this. Can we get this? Is this working? I think I'm having problems. Okay. Um, so as you can see, um, this is um, a web app for seating planning um, that I've gotten from Bitbucket. Let's see if it. Um, and it lets you uh, set up the uh, social connections from scratch and then run simulated annealing to solve. Um, this is um, something you might wanna give to someone else who may not necessarily um, be able to collect the data on their own, um, but is another really interesting option available um, in the open source community. Uh, besides uh, this this uh, website, uh, web app, and, and uh, party website, uh, you can also automate party planning with additional APIs. Uh, Twilio's blog has provided a really great introduction to their API um, with scripts to manage a guest list. Um, so it, if you go to their blog, there's a really nice uh, inf information about how to send out notifications, how to collect RSVPs, um, and to measure uh, who's coming, who has an RSVPs, uh, things like that. Um, but I think uh, the thing I would like you all to take away is that optimization libraries are really great for decision making. Um, I think that 
personally, as a data scientist, uh, decision making is often the thing that we end up being um, most helpful to our peers. Um, so uh, optimization is a really great way of aiding in decision making because it allows us to define a metric um, of measurement uh, for cost or reward um, that we can compare across different options. Um, and it also allows us to define the constraints of a problem that might be important, uh, which helps us have a good conversation with um, members of our team or other researchers we work with. Um, and many libraries um, are open source. Um, I've used Pulp in this example, but um, jump.jl is a Julia library that has gotten good reviews. Uh, PyOMO is another Python library um, that is uh, a optimization library. Um, and uh, optimization has been used uh, for decades in industry. Um, it's used in scheduling, it's used in logistics, um, and conceivably you can also use it for setting up seating arrangements. So um, I, I really suggest that you all try out using an open source optimization library. Um, it's a great uh, tool to add to your toolkit, and uh, hopefully it'll take some of the stress off your next party. Thanks. Problem, they linearize the problem, so they might. I think they might actually add some add some constraints to, to, to smooth the problem. I know that in um, the uh, Bellows and Peterson paper, they add additional constraints to linearize the problem. So that might be the way that they deal with it, because um, I think they're using they're using the, the problem setup as defined by um, Bellows and Peterson. So hopefully that helps. So are, the, are these slides generally available? Yeah, I'm, I'll put them online. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to clean this up um, and make it into something nice. Um, just as a, a plug, um, I, I'll be more than happy to put this up as like a, a binder. Um, binder is one of our projects that um, is really, really great that allows you to share notebooks and will give you my um, environment set up so I can totally put that together and put that online. Um, so see that in the future. Thank you. 